Who's this handsome guy? This is Andrico. Andrico. How long have you been working here? It's about 20 years now. 20 years? Yeah. So you're like part of the family then? Absolutely. It is family, yes. <laughs> what type of fish is this, Enrico? This is place on the ball. Place on the ball. Yeah, the flounder family. Flounder, down here. Yeah. How does it yeah. swim? Show me one more, like that. Like that, it's true. <laughs> not, <laughs> like, not like that, you see. Say, off with his head. Off with his <laughs> head. Yeah. Off with his head. Off his head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> If family ties are the ones that bind, then it's the family feast that feeds our soul. In taco we trust. In yeah. taco we trust. And tonight on First Look, we're digging on into some of the most delectable bites from these eclectic families to yours. Chin. Chin. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. <laughs> Guys, I love our family business. And what better way to start things off than by visiting our cousins across the pond. Meatballs and spaghetti peanut butter and jelly, steak and eggs. Food marriages make mouths water, and in London, England, there does not exist a more quintessential union than that of the chip and its partner, Fish. There are over 10,000 chippies operating in the UK, but there is only one toss. Located in Muswell Hill, Golden Goodness is consistently concocted by brother co-owners, George and Costas Giorgio. Wednesday is yours, me Thursday. If you want to see us both, we're both here on a Friday. And their staple plate all starts with the raw ingredient. You guys get your fish delivered here daily, I'm assuming? Yep, yes. every day. The fish comes from Grimsby. Okay. It's a fishing port. It's become one of the main ports for importing fish, and we get it directly. You guys serve a variety of fish here. We have 12 well, fishes right? on the menu. 12? You use any of them, or is it mostly the cod? In the southern of England, like London and so forth, cod is the number one fish. If you go west coast, they tend to go for a flat fish like place. <laughs> Off with his head! Off with his head! <laughs> Grab it. Got it. Wow. It's a little slimy. Slime means it's fresh. What's the technique here to deboning a fish? If you take the fish like that, mm -hmm. try to find the bone. Find the bone. And then you pull it out. Grab it. Oh, there it is. The important thing, of course, is for us to get our portions. How's that? Slightly bigger than normal, but it's not the first time I've heard that, my friend. <laughs> You're slightly more generous. So we want to be right around 300 grams. You've just given them 50 ounces <laughs> for nothing. There's going to be some happy customers here. We whip up the secret homemade batter. That batter's getting thick, boys. Dredge the fish in flour. Nice and coated. Then we fry. This would be the right way to hold yes. it, right? Place it into the hot frying pan. You're free! <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the history of Toffs. The original family was called Mr. and Mrs. Tofali, who set up a fish and chip shop. A kitchen porter used to call the owner Mr. Toff, Mr. Toff, and they liked the idea. And then slowly, slowly, they dropped the mist and it just became Toffs. When that family retired, me and my brother bought the up Toffs. Uh, they told us all the recipes. Can I try some crackling? Yeah, yeah. Some good batter. Yeah, it certainly is. But we're only halfway home, because what's fish and chips without the fries? The potatoes that we use in our establishment is from the Lincolnshire farm area. Okay. And it's Maris Piper. That's the species of potato. We find it to be the best chipping potato. Don't lose any potatoes, Johnny. Now we have to take all the parts out. The imperfections. Yeah, the imperfections. You've got to be very thinly peeling that because we don't want to waste too much potato. That's our margin, you know. Otherwise, you'll have to chip in. There you yeah. go. That there you are. Yeah. There you go, there's a few big ones there. So you guys fry your chip in the same oil that you fry your fish? Correct. Is there a reason why? The temperature will drop so that the fish does not burn. Who would have known there was such a science behind frying fish and chips? It's like mesmerizing to watch. They'll tell you when they're ready. Once they start to rise and they're on the top, the chip is... Look at that, look at that. We got a fish on the surface. And while at the surface, fish and chips may seem like an obvious juxtaposition, this English staple comes with a significant history. How did the marriage of fish and chips start in the beginning? You had the fish and the potato getting together because it gave the complete meal. Two things that in, in nature would never see each other. If you had the fish because British Isles and on the land, we were known for farming good potatoes. The Catholics yep. used to have fish on a Friday for religious reasons and it became also synonymous 
For the British people to have fish and chips on a Friday, on a Friday. how you serve a portion of chips is something that's synonymous in the UK. Okay. It used to be newspaper wrapping, but over the years they've done away with newspapers. But our actual paper that we use is newspaper offcuts. So you're actually keeping true with tradition. Absolutely. Does it also appeal to kind of all walks of life and all segments of society? I mean, does the Queen sit down for fish and chips? Absolutely. Most important, and that's probably the person we should serve one day. One day. She's invited anyway. Finally, when the couple is golden, it's time to feast. Ready oh, you know. ah! No, no, you can't ah! eat that. You can't eat that. Ah! There you go. Woo! That's tasty. That is the perfect chip. We got our chips. We got our fried fish. We're in business, boys. So now, gentlemen, it's the moment of truth. It smells incredible. It looks absolutely phenomenal. The texture and the taste is incredible. And this is the good thing about fish and chips. The two things are good in its own state. Good fresh fish and good fresh potatoes. You don't need to add anything to it to enjoy it. <laughs> that is a perfect marriage, my friends. Yeah. <laughs> it's moist, but it's not dry, because that's what happens to fish a lot of times. Fish gets dry. And when you have a meal where there's only two ingredients, it's really important to do those two things right. What's it been like working all these years with your brother? It's been fantastic, obviously. Here we are, 20 years, so we still haven't fallen out. Yeah, I've got my wife working here, he's got his daughter working here. We've had here people from day one, really. Three or four of our chefs still here with us. So it's a very family-oriented business. He does one side of the business, I do the other side. I know what he's thinking, he's thinking as well, so... I can tell. You guys finish each other's sentences. That's, that's how right, you know that's each right. thinking. You guys that's share right. a brain. And all the ingredients that you guys combine to make this meal as amazing as it is, I think, I could be wrong, but I think the most important ingredient is, is the family. family. Oh, is the right. family bond. Good, you know what I mean? I'm like the third brother. <laughs> well, you're, you're the, in the family. family. Yeah. I'll tell you what, just so you guys know, I was always mom and dad's favorite, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, I'll have a uh, Tito Rita. Oh, and a choice. Texas Bloody Mary. Good choices. Thank you. I'll tell you what, that shirt's a good choice, my friend. <laughs> now, was that an accident or did you plan that? I just did it by accident. Austin is home to some of the best food in the country. From barbecue to Japanese to fusion, you can find just about anything. And it's not only authentic, it's delicious. I said I've never been in love before, but I think I just <laughs> fell in love. So with just over 200 miles between Austin and the Mexican border, you can imagine that one popular dish stands out amongst the rest. Tacos. In taco we trust. In yeah. taco we trust. Something so simple is easy to mess up and hard to perfect. But at Wedo's Tacos, there's a secret ingredient that keeps them ahead of the pack. This is like a family affair. It is. Started by Rob and Kathy Lippincott, Wedo's Tacos has been an Austin staple for 33 years. And their daughters, Bet and Lyle, have joined the business too. You two grew up essentially in this restaurant. Yeah, this is where we did our homework. Today, I hope to become part of the family by getting in on the fun. And of course, that fun begins in the kitchen. Right now, we are going to be doing our green salsa. Salt, garlic powder, avocados, and green carrots. Oh my god. Your green carrot? <laughs> So, Patricia, how long have you been working here at Wedos? 30 years. 30 years? Growing up, was she almost like, like a second like mother figure to Absolutely. you? Absolutely. We've always loved Patty. She's been there for all of our life events. Kathy? Yep. The boss, El Jefe. What is masa? Masa is the corn dough that we mix and then use to make our handmade corn tortillas. So, ladies, we've got all our ingredients in here. We've got our tomatillos, our jalapenos, our aguacate. aguacate. <laughs> now, my favorite part, I get to play with the power tool. Yes. Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> That's from Terminator. <laughs> Oh, that burned my mouth. <coughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why a taqueria? We enjoy traveling in Mexico. Love the taquerias, especially in Mexico City. And where did you get the name Huero's from? It's kind of a term of endearment in Mexico for lighter complected people. We wanted it to be something that we were. Arriba, abajo, para centro, para dentro. Mm. Mm -mm. Delicioso. Delicioso. Ah! Hey. 
So now we close the door, push this down. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yes. Now what do I do, just slap it on there? Slowly lay it on. Ah! I messed it up. If I had to be in the kitchen, this is exactly where I'd want to be, in front of a grill with Dad. <laughs> is this pork already marinated? No, before? No. no. Straight from the pig. A thin slice from a pork shoulder. Here we go, mira, mira. Uh, uh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> is it doing it by hand, kind of the allure to what well, it's not just that. You get to watch everyone make your meal, and you just kind of feel like you get to be a part of it. So would you almost consider this restaurant a member of the family? Exactly, and the employees too. I've been here for 30 minutes, yeah. and I'm already feeling like yeah. I'm a member of the family. <laughs> exactly. Oh. And just as if I was at my own parents' home, it's time to sit down for a nice family meal. No elbows on the table, por favor. Wow. I mean, that's everything. Mm -hmm. That is savory meat. The pineapple adds like a sweet citrus kick to it. It's like I close my eyes and I feel like I'm sitting south of the border. <laughs> Northern Mexico, South Texas, there, there's no one side or the other. It's all one thing. The food is the same way. We've just tried to reflect that as best we could. I just want to thank you guys again for adopting me into the family. Absolutely. Uh, but I need the keys to the station wagon tonight because I got a hot date. <laughs> <laughs> That's salty. <laughs> Whoa, buddy, that'll wake you up in the morning, huh? If a fine wine is a result of capturing a region's terroir, then all that comes from the sea is a matter of marijuana. The organics, the silt, the water, water temperature, and of course, the salinity. In French, how do you say pink? Close. Close? Close. That's beautiful. The family owned and operated marshes neighboring the French village of Grisant span nearly 1,000 acres. And in a region famous for its fermented grapes, salt maker Looney Gabineau is harvesting incredibly high quality salt from the very unique locale. I've never seen anything like this. It's pink. This water is literally pink. What gives it this pink color? Signal. So it's not actually then the salt crystals that are pink. It's the algae surrounding the salt? It's exactly the salt. Just salt, no water? Yeah. Il faut prendre juste dessus. Okay. On peut le poser là. Okay. What then distinguishes your salt from other types? Je suis la quatrième génération à faire du sel à Grissan. Il est on essaie vraiment de récolter à la main, de perpétuer une tradition. So it's safe to say there's a lot of salty dudes in your family, huh? Ouais. Yeah. Oui, oui. Le cristaux est tout tout fin. Wow. Qui va se cristalliser au-dessus de l'eau, avec des conditions météo très particulières. On a du soleil et beaucoup de vent. You take the Mediterranean seawater, and then with the help of the sun and the evaporation, you're left with pure salt. The creme de la creme. This really is something. And once you've got a taste for the sea, you're not going to want to stop with just the salt. Question everyone wants to know: Are oysters an aphrodisiac? Yes, elles sont vraiment aphrodisiaques. Par expérience. <laughs> At their family-owned restaurant, Les Saint Bart, Florent Tarbouriesh and his children, daughter Florie, and his son Roman, are growing some of the most exceptional seafood you've ever tasted. Your family seems like you guys are all very, very close-knit. How important do you think that is to the overall experience? Un des piliers vraiment de, de, de notre famille, c'est la passion. Fed by the salty Mediterranean Sea, fresh runoff from the Rhone River and the Canal du Midi, the Lagoon de Tou maintains a delicate mixture of mineral-rich waters ideal for farming shellfish. This is not what I pictured it being. This is amazing. Ça va? When an infant oyster grows to about an inch, a hundred of them are cemented to an eight-foot string and affixed to a solar-powered pulley system which raises and submerges the mollusks into the sea. Why do you have the oysters here on these ropes? They have to be out of the water one, two, three, four, five hours per day. This one, take this. Yes. Don't want to lose these. If the oysters stay uh, in the water, they stay always open and the muscle is very small. They're not working out. Exactly. But then when you pull it up out of the water, it has to close. Yes. And that's why its muscles are so big. 
Yes. Like you, big yeah. muscles. To keep water inside, they have to make mother of pearl. It has to create mother of pearl to protect itself? Yes, yes. That is a big difference between our houses. How old is this technique? Uh, one century. A century? More, more, more century. No kidding. Put the line up through there. Yeah. It's no, going to no, pull no, them all off. No, it's going to snap them no, all off. No, no. Oh, look at this. Check this out. How long does it take for them to get this size? Two or three years. Ooh, that's a big one. Look at the size of this guy. Oh, yeah. We have to taste. No time like the present. <laughs> Drum roll. Yeah. The size is perfect. This, this is perfect. Chin. 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 Bon appetit. Bon appetit. <laughs> mm, that is a tasty oyster. Yeah? Oh, my God. Does it make you feel proud to know that we are eating something that you spent five years of your life raising? Yes, yeah, sure. I'm very proud. And we are very proud of the quality of the mother of pearl. Look at that mother of pearl. Because it's beautiful. For us, it's our passion. Passion? Passion. C'est le goût de la passion. The taste of the passion. That is delicious. Mm. Sweet, salty, and the texture. Very good texture. Good muscle tone. It's not too squishy. It's not too hard. It's right in the middle. So it's a good balance. No good, perfect balance. Perfect balance. If this isn't living, I don't know what is. Oh, merci. Merci beaucoup. De rien. Welcome. There's nothing like the family grind, bringing loved ones together to make a quality product. And for Jamie and Harry Foster of Georgia Grinders, carrying on the traditions of producing some of the country's finest almond butter is a family affair. It's actually based off of my grandfather's recipe. He actually started making almond butter back in the 70s to combat cardiovascular disease. Clean living and healthy eating in the 70s don't necessarily go hand in hand. No. Grandpa was ahead of his time. He lived to be 97, and today would have been his 100th birthday. Happy birthday, Grandpa. Ooh. Come on over here. We'll get started. Let's do it. And we're going to put almonds on this tray, about six pounds here. Okay. 5.6. Almost there. Oh, yeah. I did it. On the money. Like, being a couple that lives together, works together, what do you guys find yourself disagreeing over the most? Oh, gosh. Harry's the worst at returning phone calls. So what she's telling you I'm is the same way. it's just like any other business. So these 10 trays, what's like the yield going to be almond butter wise? Like, That'll be 80 jars. 80 jars of almond butter right jars. here. It's about 300 to fill a jar. Now we're going to have to put them in the oven. Okay. It will be a pretty quick fire drill. Put the gloves on. This one's going to go and 30 seconds later, this one's going to hit. Gotcha. Three, two, 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 defused it, go. Hot trays coming through. Hot nuts. Ah! You can start unloading that one. Ah! You missed the bomb. The bomb went off. It was hot! Time! Oh, you did it! Woo! Look at that! Turn it on. Almond butter's coming out oh, now. Oh, look at that! Guys, I love our family business. This is all part of the compensation package, okay? So what is it that entices the two of you to go into business together? I love to bake. I love to get creative when it comes to making sauces. Whereas Harry just likes good food and enjoys grilling. So the match made in heaven. It was a match made in heaven. Jar. Lid. Have you ever seen an employee move this fast? I tell you what, it's lightning fast. All right, Johnny, it's time to graduate. You've earned your Georgia Grinders cap. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. You You're part, part of the team? the team. Are you ready to go south? Am I? Let's go do it. Once we've packaged the supply, it's time for some field work. I'll drive. As we sell our goods at the Peachtree Road Farmer's Market. All right, Johnny, let's hear your sales pitch. Our butter's so good, it's nuts. That'll sell it. Where should I put these? You don't know. Aren't you the boss? Well, really, she's the boss. She's the boss? Well, I thought I was the boss. But this ain't my first rodeo. As the son of a California farmer's market pioneer, huh. we're allowed to do this. We got clearance. I call it quality control. This sort of place runs deep in my family tree. 
it's time to dust off my old skills and show them how it's done. Miss, would you like to try some Georgia Grinders cashew butter, peanut butter? You gotta make the airplane noise when you're flying it in. That's a motorcycle noise. How was that, tasty? I'm gonna give you your own special little peanut butter pouch right there. Hey, you guys know we go good with those ice cream cones? Some almond butter. We are humble nut butter salesmen. Do you like it smooth? Smith. She likes it smooth. This is the one you wanted? I don't know if I can do that like there. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. We'll do a train. Oh choo choo! It's so good. Right? See that? Well, family, what a day at the market. You did a great job, Johnny. Yeah, we've had some record sales thanks to you. Give it up. How do you think it went? I think okay. it went well. Just when I thought I knew everything there was to know about nuts, these two nuts proved me completely wrong. Multiply that by two. These four nuts. Yes. We came together as a team, and more importantly, we came together as a family. One, two, three, let's, let's go, go nuts. nuts! Woo! So whether you're feeding at the family fold, or digging into the dynasty's ultimate dish, one thing is clear. Everything tastes better with the helping of family.